All right, so I'm sitting here with uh, Jackson M3 Chaoke. You wanted me to add Fantonda as well, so I'll do that. Jackson Fantonda M3 Chaoke, is that the right way of saying it? Yeah, it's the right way, it's the right way. Fantonda, yeah, it's actually Fantono, because uh, it's Dono, you know, yeah. You're fighting on December 23 against a, a former opponent of yours in which on paper you scored a draw that day. I know you do feel that you won the fight, but you, you're redoing it and you're going up a weight. Yeah, 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 it's like that, Aiden, you know. It was unfinished business. Uh, I think now it's time that uh, we deal with it, you know. Like the first fight, I, uh, I strongly feel I've won it. So for this fight, it's just to convince uh, uh, people to show them that uh, I won that fight, you know. And uh, this time I think it's going to be much easier for me, you know, because I know what I'm dealing with. You're going back down to the Eastern Cape after a while of fighting at home here in, in Johannesburg. And, uh, you know, going back down there, do you have any concerns about the judging? Uh, I don't have any concerns uh, about the judges, you know. I let my work... Uh, uh, speak for itself, you know. Uh, I'm definitely sure I'm going to make. I'm going to make sure that uh, I win this fight uh, convincingly. You know, uh, it might. We might. We might even have a, a stoppage on later rounds. You know, because I'm feeling very strong. You know, I don't have uh, weight problems, so I uh, I don't drop any weight. You know, right now as you speak, maybe I'm about two kilos over. You know, I feel comfortable. You know, so I feel going into the fight. I'm gonna come. I, I'm gonna get in the ring uh, stronger, you know. I will say this, your opponent has definitely grown in sort of his stature, his name has grown in the industry, particularly since the fight against you and he's kept winning. Do you have any fears that um, his ability increase uh, will hinder your performance? Uh, you know, boxing, we don't see it uh, the same way, you know. Uh, people say he has grown, he says he has grown. But in my eyes, I still see him doing the stupid mistakes he's been doing before. Uh, and also, you must look at the level of opponents he's fought, uh, cutting my fight, you know, from uh, the guy from Zimbabwe, uh, the guy from uh, Philippines. But I don't believe that guy was from Philippines. He's probably been, they got him here by uh, Louis Bota. He's from Pakistan. He owns a shop somewhere here. Uh, and that guy, you know, and uh, who, and the guy from Namibia, you know, you must check the level of opposition, opposition he's, he's been uh, fighting, you know. It's easy to look good when you're fighting a, a, a lesser, a, a, what you call a, a good boxer, you know. He's, he hasn't fought a, a, a good boxers, you know. Those boxers that he fought were like uh, car guards. And, uh, well, ever since you stepped up as well you've been on espn's platform for a while now just building up your name to go up a weight division do you do you not see it as a, a potential risk you know seeing as you've been a flyweight your entire career uh my man you know when i turned pro uh in my days in amateurs the weight limit for flyweight is 51 so i used to make i used to fight like 51 kgs and then when i turned pro the weight limit for flyweight it's uh, what you call 50.88 so i don't see that uh, huge difference from junior from uh, flyweight to uh, junior bantam you know and i don't see it as a risk because uh, most of the time when i'm doing sparring in the gym i'm sparring like much heavier guys you know i'm sparring junior welterweights so I don't see, uh, I don't see it as a risk, you know. And again, I got skills, my man. You know, I can protect myself in the ring. I know how to get myself out of trouble, you know. And comparing my skills and comparing his skills, you know, we're not in the same level, you know. I've been boxing for years, you know. I know what to do when I'm in there. So come the 23rd of December, you know. It's going to be a good fight. I'm definitely sure about it because he, he he's a he's a good fighter, but he's not in my uh, level. You know, me and him we're not in the same level. But come the 23rd of December, I'm going to show that. You know. All right. So you're going to show redemption, and then I'm assuming after that you're going to go back to flyweight as well as you are world rated in that division and uh, could potentially be having a world title fight. So hopefully next year. You know, my man, you can never predict the future. Uh, as soon as I finish with Kafu, maybe there's a junior bantam who feels uh, threatened, you know. Maybe there's a bantam who feels uh, threatened, you know what I mean. 
We are not scared. Anyone can get it, you know. If maybe there's a junior bantam who feels like uh, we can square up in the ring and he calls me out, who knows? I might stay a bit longer in junior bantam than expected. But, you know, the plan is to fight this fight and uh, go back to flyweight. But, you know, I'd love to campaign both weights, you know. Uh, flyweight, I'm not getting uh, as much opportunities that I've loved to. Uh, internationally, you know, but uh, if there's an opportunity like overseas for junior bantam or bantam, I'll go and fight, my man. You know, for me, it's about fighting. I'm just enjoying the ride, you know. Uh, I can't be sitting around waiting for an opportunity to present itself for a world uh, title fight, you know. If now they come up to me and say, here's a, a chance to fight for maybe, let's say, IBF or WBO, Junior Bantam, I'll go and fight, you know. Uh, weight is not a problem, I mean, it's not a problem. Uh, as soon as we get in the ring, I think uh, once we get the feel, you know, uh, all that goes away, you know. But uh, coming to the weight issue, uh, I'm not worried. All right, and you, you have been very active this year, so you're probably going to be in the best shape of your career to take a fight like this. Being, being active like this, and it wasn't the case a couple of years ago where you were just waiting and waiting. Do you feel now that you're younger again, you know, more rejuvenated? Uh, you know, my man, the other day, it's funny you asked me this question. The other day I was thinking about uh, my career, you know, and then I thought of that time, when from uh, when I lost uh, my first pro profile, uh, what you call uh, attempt for the essay, essay shot, you know, and then I thought if I had won that night, I wouldn't be here, you know. And I think this time in my career, in my life, I think I'm living the best time of my life, you know. And then I'm at the peak of my career, you know. I feel good, you know. I say, I thank God that that day, uh, 2013, I lost that fight. I never became champion that time. And what has happened in, in, in my life, the layoff, not getting fights, getting fights cancelled, you know, uh, it was a blessing in disguise, you know. If I had good opportunities then, I wouldn't have the time to enjoy this, what I'm enjoying now, what I have now. It was was being prepared for me, you know. Uh, I'm happy it has been given to me this time. And that time I was young. I look at myself and then I'm thinking the things, stupid things that I've done uh, at my young young uh, young age, you know. Uh, I'm like, what was I thinking, you know? But. Now, given this opportunity, I'm much wiser, you know. If, I, if I'm given an opportunity now, like to fight for a world title, I'll know what to do. You understand? So if I was given an opportunity that time to fight for a world title, or maybe to fight for any title, you know, I would rush into it and then I'll do stupid stuff. But given an opportunity now, I know what to do. Like now, going to, into this fight with uh, Kafu, it's not like the decision of going up to junior bantam i just took it like that you know i first thought about it and then i first, first uh, weighed my options and then thought okay okay this and this and this and everything balanced you know now i don't just do things you know i, I think i'm very fortunate to you know getting uh, opportunities like this and it came at the right time at my age and that's the other thing there's been a lot of banter between you and him in this fight he's talking very confidently as well you know the same way you're talking he's he's feeling the same way with him being so confident do you expect it to be a competitive fight or do you expect it to be similar to the first fight okay maybe it might be competitive maybe few, first few rounds but like i said to him uh, when we had that uh, press conference you know i beat up his boy kotana his nickname is uh, the dictator he couldn't dictate, you know. So I think I own up the rights to call myself the dictator for this fight because I'll be doing the dictating, you understand? Uh, I'll be doing the dictating. I'll be saying when to fight, when to stop fighting and box, you know. So I'm not worried about him coming with confidence, you know. 
uh, he can talk, he can do whatever he wants to do, he can swim, he can do whatever he wants uh, for training, you know, he's handless. They can tell him, no, uh, say this, let's send video to him, you know. Mind games, mind games is something I, I know for a very, very long time, you know. I know I'm renting free in his mind, you know, I'm living rent free, you know. I'm not worried about him. Me, I'm just worried about putting food on the table for my family, you know. I know I'm going to win. I'm definitely sure I was born to win, you know. Winning is my thing. It's, it's in me, you know. So I'm not worried. All right, so you're very confident as well going to the fight as you should be. You've been on a, an absolute tear this year and obviously going into this fight and you felt that you won the first fight even though there was a draw. What would be your message to him? You know, if you're standing in front of you right now and you know you guys are just about to enter that ring, what would you say to him? You know, I'll say to him because he's been telling people and in videos that he's gonna knock me out, you know. But uh, you know, there's a saying: you live by the sword, you die by the sword, you know. So if it's going to be like that, my man, right back at you, you know. But uh, me. I don't see this fight uh, going 12 rounds, you know. I think uh, later rounds, I'm going to have a hey, champ. I'm going to have uh, the edge, you know. I'm definitely sure about that because I've been watching the fight uh, like almost every day, you know. There's some stupid mistakes that I, I did, that things that I, I shouldn't have done, you know. So for this fight, it's just to rectify those, those things and capitalize on them, you know. Uh, he knows deep down in his heart that he can't beat me, you know. He's just saying this because, you know, he wants his handlers, his fans, you know, to, you know, uh, believe in him, you know. I don't need anyone to believe in me. I believe in myself, you know. So, and I'm not doing this for fans and all that, you know. Some of us are doing this to put food on the table to secure our children's uh, future, you know. So, for me, this is life or death, you know. And I don't mind dying for my family, you know. I don't, I don't know if he's willing to die in the ring because he's still young. Me, even if I die, I've seen it all, you know. So he must know that I'm willing to die. Is he willing to die? That is the question of the day. Is he willing to die? Wow. So Jackson, thank you for uh, sitting down and doing the interview with us. Obviously, speaking to us about this highly anticipated fight. We look forward to seeing what the outcome of the bout is. Of course, a lot of talk and a lot of hype has gone into the fight. So. A lot of crowd interest, especially down in the Eastern Cape, and uh, your supporters up here in Khatseng will be behind you. What's your last message, your thank yous or shout outs? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my sponsors. Uh, they mean uh, a lot to me. Uh, they push me, you know. I'd like to thank all my trainers, you know, for giving advice, you know. You know, sometimes you look at your trainer in a bad way when you're thinking you're tired, you're tired and this guy tells you, hey, you still want, still have one more session to do, you know, and that push, you know, uh, it helps, you know, it might not help that time because you're feeling like this guy is trying to torture you and this guy is, is, is making things like his SA uh, National Defense Force, you know, that's, all, that's what I've been calling the gym now, you know, I feel like I'm in SA National Defense Force, you know. It's like, hey, everything is hard, brah. But at least here we don't have any more banners, you know. Everyone's, <laughs> everyone's pushing, you know. And one thing I want to say, Mohamed, I was also thinking about you. The other day I was watching uh, what you call my first interview with you, Mohamed. You have gone uh, very, a long way, Mohamed. Uh, and then I'm proud to see. I like seeing people starting from scratch and doing very well, Mohamed. Uh, SA Boxing Talk has been, you know, putting us on the platform, you know, you're doing a very good job, Hayden. I want sharp, sharp, my man. Thank you.